Hello everyone, I'm Mood here from the Target Common YouTube channel and in this video tutorial, we are going to learn about Selenium WebDriver architecture. In this video, I am going to explain how does Selenium work internally. We have covered a lot of topics of Selenium WebDriver till now and in most of the examples, we launch browser and perform some actions. For example, in this program, I am creating an object of Chrome Driver class to launch Chrome Browser. Then I am using get method to load the application URL. I use find element method to locate some web element and by using click method, I am performing a click on that. So it looks very easy here because for every action on browser, we have some deleted method. But do you really wonder how does internally it work? So basically here we have two systems. One, your web driver script and another one browser. So first one we have web driver scripts and here we have methods like get or find element. Second system we have browsers and these two systems are developed by some different vendors. So now question is how these web driver scripts communicate with browsers. Let's try to relate this problem with a simple problem first. Suppose we have two persons and one person speaks only English and another person speaks Spanish. So obviously they cannot communicate to each other. But if they want to communicate then they need a third person who knows both English and Spanish so that first two persons can communicate with the help of third person. Same thing or same solution we have here as well. So they need a system which will work as intermediary between your web driver scripts and browsers. But who is the best candidate to be third party here? So here protocols or specifications come into the picture. So before Selenium 3.8, web driver used a protocol called JSON wire protocol or specifications. After 3.8 8. In fact, from 3.8, they started following a new protocol or specification which is W3C recommendation. I will talk about these terms in this video later. Now let's focus on JSON wire protocol. Now we understand why do we need a protocol or specification. So the basic reason is that these things are needed to communicate between web driver scripts and browsers. And since we have multiple language bindings available for web driver and also we have multiple browsers vendors. So we need a specification or protocol so that they can talk to each other effectively. Because it is not possible for web driver developers to write specific handlers for every browser. Because every browser may work internally differently. So web driver developers develop one protocol called JSON wire protocol specification and it was majorly followed in Selenium 2 and 3. So what was the content of JSON wire protocol specification? Let's go to official documentation of JSON wire protocol. This is the link of official documentation of JSON wire protocol which is legacy now because since 3.8 we are following some different standard. I will talk about that later. It says that this wire protocol defines a restful web service using JSON over HTTP. So these protocols are nothing but a list of REST APIs. On this page, you will find a list of all the available endpoints. If Selenium people wants to launch a browser, then they have a HTTP method of type post with the base pass slash session and it will create a new session. Creating a new session means launching the browser. Similarly, if you want to set the timeouts, then again they have post endpoint with some base path. So whatever actions we perform, for all those actions, we have rest endpoints. So when we write Chrome driver, driver equal to new Chrome driver, that means internally it is going to create a rest request to this endpoint. So web driver people has created a list of endpoints. So now these REST endpoints must be served by browsers. Now these protocols or REST endpoints are shared with browser vendors like Chrome, Firefox, etc. Those browser vendors need to provide a system which will serve the response to those endpoints like a normal client server architecture. So every browser created their own servers like Chrome browser created Chrome driver server, Firefox browser created Gecko servers. Similarly for other browsers also they have their own servers. So here third system can be called as browser server and this will be unique for every browsers. Now from web driver they created the REST request and sends to this browser server. This browser server understand that request and serve the expected response or throws the error if something is not proper with the request. If everything is fine then action will be performed on browser. So this is the internal working logic between web driver and browser. 
Since web developer people has no need to worry about the internal working of browsers, they have just endpoints, and it's it's all browsers' responsibility to serve the request with the expected behavior. This JSON wire protocol was not an official standard. Because of that, browsers vendors were not responsible to implement. those specifications in a proper manner or consistent way you must have faced some scenario in which one script might be working fine in a chrome browser but not on different browsers or one script takes more time to execute in ie but faster in firefox or some elements are not found on ie but those are easily found on chrome the major reason of these inconsistent behavior was lack of standards to be followed by browsers vendors to support json wire protocols every browser vendors implemented the json wire protocol in their own way which resulted in inconsistent behavior of web driver scripts execution across browsers previously we have really struggled to execute web driver scripts on internet explorer browser another major problem with json wire protocol was in cooperating new features of browsers with web driver Web driver request did not follow any official web standards like W3C but browser servers were developed by following W3C standard so when non standardized web driver request is sent to standardized browser server then request was converted as per W3C standard and then sent for processing same was followed while sending back response to web driver so these internal conversion make web driver scripts execution slower so to overcome these problems of json wire protocol web driver developers thought to make a standard which will be an official because if the standards are official then all the browsers vendors are responsible to implement those protocol specifications in a consistent way and most of the browsers followed w3c standard so web driver people also tried to make a specification which is w3c standard let's see what is w3c first so w3c stands for world wide web consortium which is an international community who develops standards and guidelines for long term growth of the web it was founded in 1994 and uh, the major responsibility of this w3c is to publish recommendations that are considered web standards and these standards are implemented in browsers blog search engines and other softwares so developer of web driver was already aware of these problems and simon stewart which is also the developer of web driver tool started working on web driver specification so a browser automation community was created in which we have the people from web driver and browser vendors with the goal to develop a standard for browser automation that would be consistent across different browsers so web driver developers developed and discussed those standards multiple times during 2013 to 2016 and browsers vendors provided many feedbacks and suggestions which was incorporated with the web driver specifications after incorporating all the recommendation from browsers vendors in the web driver specification it reached the status of w3c candidate recommendation in 2016 and it was officially published as w W3C recommendation on 5th June 2018. So once it became the W3C standard, all the browsers and web driver developers are responsible to follow the same standard in a consistent and optimal way. Now let's see what is content of W3C web driver specification. So here also we have list endpoints. So to launch a browser, we have post call with the session base path. Similarly, we have list endpoints for get timeouts, set timeouts if you want to navigate to any URL or if you want to get the current URL. For everything we have the endpoints. But these endpoints are now as per W3C standard. So before Selenium 3.8, they had followed the JSON wire protocol. Since 3.8, they are following W3C web driver specification. if you see at the high level so whatever json wire protocols we had earlier those were rewritten or standardized based on the feedback improvements and suggestions given by stakeholders these stakeholders were browser vendors web driver tool developers and w3c members and after incorporating all these things this json wire protocol were rebranded 
as a W3C standard. So once everything follows the W3C standard, now browsers vendors will have the consistent implementations of protocols. So it may reduce the chances of flaky test across browsers or any slowness. Since now everything follows the same standard, there will be no intermediary encryption or decryption before serving the request or sending the response, which makes the communication of WebDriver script with browsers faster. So these are the major advantages after implementing the W3C WebDriver specification. Let me summarize Selenium WebDriver architecture using a flow diagram. This diagram shows the architecture before Selenium 3.8. So Selenium WebDriver supports multiple language bindings like Java, Python, Ruby, JavaScript, etc. So you can use any programming language of your choice. So suppose here we use Java and write a basic flow in which we launch Chrome browser and we will load Google URL. So basically we will create an object of of Chrome driver class and then we will use that Chrome driver reference to call the git method with the application URL to be loaded. Since here it is using JSON wire protocol before Selenium 3.8, so it is going to create REST calls based on JSON wire protocol specifications. So when we create an object of Chrome driver, that means we want to launch Chrome browser and in the JSON wire protocol they have defined one REST endpoint which is a post call with the slash session as the base path to launch a browser. Let me quickly show you that again. So this is the JSON wire protocol specification and if you come down in the command summary you will find one post method with the slash session base path and summary it says that it will create a new session. If you go to description of this endpoint in this page you will find that this list endpoint is responsible to create a new session and here we have some description. So we we need to pass these JSON parameters and it will return you some object. So we don't need to do anything explicitly. But when you create an object of Chrome driver class, automatically these things will be done internally. Once REST call is created, that API will hit some server since we are creating an object of Chrome driver. So here we will have one dedicated server for Chrome browser only. Chrome driver understand that REST endpoint and it will validate all the data in the request and if everything is fine it is going to launch the chrome browser second method we are calling get so get will also associated with some rest endpoint let me quickly show that so in the json wire protocol specification we have post method and here we need to pass the session id with the url whatever we want to load so when browser is launched in the response it will return the session id the same session id we need to use in this rest endpoint to load the URL and this API will hit the Chrome driver again. Why? Because we are passing the session ID and that session ID belongs to Chrome browser. So Chrome driver will understand that existing session ID and that application or Google URL will be loaded into open Chrome browser. In Selenium 4, we have only one change. Instead of JSON wire protocol, it will use W3C web driver standard. So in Selenium 4 also, when we create an object of Chrome driver class, it will create the REST request, but that will be as per W3C standard, which I have already shown you previously. There is no other difference between Selenium 3 and Selenium 4 architecture here, except the protocol. I would like to talk about some misconception or myth about Selenium 4. Myth 1. We do not need browser drivers like Chrome driver, Geeko driver, etc. from Selenium 4, which is not correct. I have just shown you the architecture. Actually, what happened in Selenium 4? Selenium 4 has integrated Selenium Manager, which is responsible to download browser servers for you and put into the path. We don't need to do explicitly now, but that does not mean that you don't need it. Internally, it is required because if there's no browser drivers, then how the list endpoint will be served. Myth number two, browser drivers are developed by Selenium web driver developers, which is not correct. Browser drivers are always developed by browsers vendors because how Selenium web driver developer will know the internal working logic of browsers. So Chrome driver is created by Chromium team at Google. Similarly, Geeko driver is developed by Mozilla team with 3. There is no more REST calls with JSON body over HTTP in Selenium 4, which is 100% wrong. We have REST calls, but those REST calls are as per standard of W3C. So that's all in this video. If you have any doubt, please comment on this video. If you really like my videos, please like, comment, subscribe and share with others. Thank you everyone.